understand that today we're going to be talking about the recent market news. In the past three days, we have seen that the over 10 central banks in the world have released its monetary policy solutions. Um, so first, we're going to we are going to talk about them one by one, and uh, let's first get in with the Bank of England. And uh, so basically. Bank of England, as well as the Federal Reserve of the U.S., have announced a suspension of raising interest rates. Um, it's, it's on they're still very tight about the monetary policy under the big global um, inflation trend, and uh, uh, so the Bank of Japan have compromised and announced interest rate of rising interest rate of 25 basis points and the European Central Bank well, clearly re released to the next monetary policy meeting to suspend the signal. And the, mo the main developing economies have mostly agreed with, um, with the fact that the, mo the interest rates have closed to a peak. So it has been, we can see that there, it has been like a widely consensus that uh, central banks have been continuing to maintain the current interest rates for a long enough time until the inflation actually um, shows a decreasing trend and uh, to maintain it around the 2% target range. It also means that the monetary easing in the last decade in the 2010s will not really come back anymore. On September 20th, the Fed announced a pause from raising interest rates, giving it around 5.25% to 5.5%. Uh, um, in the Jackson Hole, um, international economic meeting, the Fed has been showing some interest in pausing interest rates, but um, and even decreasing it as early as the first quarter of next year. But um, the recent August inflation data, which has a CPI of 3.7%, has shown some sig signals that may be further like uh, holding this high interest rate for longer may be necessary so that the companies and uh, the whole economy needs to be more aware of about the impact of in high interest rates and uh, the time it takes to, uh, to sprinkle through the economy. So the so the pause uh, pause expectation positive expectation for the interest rate has also expect um, in some ways um, influence the um, the outlook for the, the the treasury's outlook for the GDP forecast this year and uh, the MPC as well as its forecast for GDP growth this year. 2.1% from 1% in June, and raise, raise GDP growth from to 1.5% from 1.1% in 2024. Unlike the Fed, which has a strong domestic growth and uh, uh, it looks like a controlled economic data, and which including employment, unemployment. And CBI, the UK and has 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 maintained its interest rate at six point seven percent in August, which is below its eleven point one percent peak last year, but still very significantly higher than the other European powers and the United States. The OECD forecast inflation to reach seven point two percent this year which is the highest among most of the major 
I get economies. And it's uh, back Bank of England governor Bailey said on t September 22nd that interest rates are unlikely to rise further. And there are many indicators suggesting that inflation is already falling down, which means that it's a positive trend. And And uh, um, right now, raising interest rates without inflation has also caused division within the Bank of England. And so, in the, the their structure is like nine m members a committee deciding the monetary policy rate, but only five are supporting the maintaining interest rate part. And the weak British economy has also forced the, the Bank of England to raise interest rates further, that its GDP has contracted 0.5% from in July from June. And uh, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan Chase have since had UK GDP growth to 3.3% and 0.4%, the worst performing economy of the G7 nations. Unlike Britain, which has a poor economic indicator, the Swiss National Bank announced it will keep its policy rate at 1.75% and did not rule out the, further, the potential for further in credit rate increase in the future. So Swiss inflation is relatively contained, but it's just 1.6% in August. And it's even below the ceiling of 2% inflation target. So the Swiss government on September 20th expects the GDP growth to remain 1.3% this year. The Swiss National Bank and also, also actually lacks the incentive so, and the need to raise interest rate further. So in its neighboring economies like Norway and Sweden, they announced a 25 basis point and kept increase and uh, and uh, kept the uh, interest rate from 4% to 4.425%. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next episode.